I've got about 16, uh, 15 or 16 pages of uh, the word of the Lord that the Lord has uh, given. So every day is still a day waiting before the Lord. What is he going to say today? Then my mind goes into this guilt mode. Am I waiting for a word? Am I waiting for him? You know, you can never settle this. It's always like that. I am waiting for you, Lord. But of course you will speak, right? I want the word as well. So the Lord has spoken many, many things. But on the other hand, I will wish that, I will wish that the Lord will give me all the loving messages, the very good promises and that kind of things. But because of the nature of our call and the nature of the responsibility that is resting on our church, the Lord shows a little bit more. I had more in the last six, five days. Tours of heaven which I've not seen before. I'm so thankful. Every time that, that uh, things will finish, I will just be thinking, why is the Lord showing me all this? Why is he telling me all that? But, uh, so the Lord asked me to speak something important Today's message will sound as though it should be said tomorrow, and tomorrow's one will sound as, uh, sound as though it should be said today. So I'm, I'm getting, I said, why is the arrangement? I'm not sure. So turn with me to Psalms 149. How many of you love the word of God? Amen. So I pray that this coming year 2022, dwell in the word. Be strong in the word. Make a decision to read more than usual. Make the Bible as your book in the family. Amen. Amen. Psalms 149. We know this scripture. At least, at least one verse we will know very well. It says in verse uh, 6, Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Now the actual translation is actually your throat. But we used to say this, uh, be in your mouth. Remember the old song? Scripture and song, let the high praises of God. Do you know the song? I don't know. Those who don't know, I wrote the song. But those who know, we used to sing. <laughs> okay, for the sake of those who don't know. Can you increase the bass on my voice? Not the treble, the bass. Okay. Are you ready? We sing that song. Let the high praises of God in my mouth and a two-aged sword in my hand. Nobody knows. I'll teach you tomorrow. <laughs> it's a scripture in song that uh, they will use all the scriptures and make it like a song. And the church, these are all the 1980s uh, songs, you know. So you will remember scripture in memory. And people will, so this Psalm 149, let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. Why is the Lord saying at this moment of our lives? Because remember, even though it's a matter of an hour, uh, next year is coming, but Jesus is already there for next year, isn't it? Some nations of the world have already crossed. At least you know America is really not forward, it's behind a little bit. Some other nation like Singapore has already crossed forward. So it is not new. Nothing new is going to happen. I tell you what's new. Jesus is still going to be there for a while. But God is telling us how we should enter into this coming year. He's telling us you've got to have the high praises of God in your mouth. Amen. Amen. But you see, let's look at verse 1. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praises in the assembly of the godly. And that is the commitment. A strong anointing will come upon his church as we enter not just the normal praises, but something so high in Jesus' name. And so this afternoon, while I was just praying and thinking about it, we start very early. We pray for a few hours. We rest for a while. We start prayer, transcribe prayer, and then this is how the whole day will keep going. To a point that I actually forgot what day is it today. I know it's Eve. 
Is it tomorrow Sunday? So my mind keeps going differently because of the time factor. And, uh, and uh, as I was waiting before the Lord, suddenly a new, uh, a new tune from heaven came into my heart because I'm asking the Lord, what is the high praises? I know how to sing. I know how to play music. I'm all the time singing. But I'm singing what I'm familiar with. What I know how to do. If you say there is a new song, and if there is a high praise in that new song, and if there is an anointing in that new song which will create a higher praise, then me got to show it to me. As I was singing, suddenly a tune from heaven came, and I was singing and singing and singing. And then the Lord said, now go and preach this word. Sing to the Lord a new song. Thank you. My question we have for us tonight is, how do we want to end the year in your heart and in your mind? You see, for some, there could be many reasons to end, uh, uh, close this year with negativity, pain, regrets, sadness. We may have our fair share of challenge, which are legit. Not that we are trying to cook up. Challenges we would have gone through. But you see, Christians, when we have challenges, we just don't want to say it. We only say the positive things. The moment you say something negative, people say, how can you say that? You're a child of God. But in your heart, it could be painful. But my question is, how do we want to end this year and begin the next? Perhaps the death of loved ones could be babies or could be an adult. I just, uh, the Lord put in, our heart, in my heart a few days ago to contact a woman of God that we know. She's in America. And I just texted her. I, the last time I texted her was in the beginning. Uh, in fact, it was last year. And then I, I was just reminded, so I texted her. She said this year is a very, has been a very difficult year because her father passed away. And uh, her, her assistant's husband, who's just 50-something years old, he he, uh, he passed on as well. So it was a difficult and a painful year for them. There could be 101 reasons to close this year with sadness or regret or wishing they would be here and so on. But God is wanting to write a different signature in the hearts of His children. Amen. And He is declaring, and listen, He's not suggesting, He's not giving His opinion, He's commanding us to sing to the Lord a new song. Because the world is promising, the governments of the world are promising, UN is promising, WHO is promising, the next few years is going to be difficult, but God promises that when His church will sing a new song, the next few years and always every year is going to be a year of triumph. Amen. Now, triumph doesn't mean there is no pain. Triumph doesn't mean there is no sadness. Triumph means in the midst of all this challenge, there is a God who is going to lift you up. Amen. It is something funny that only, only a person who walks with God can understand. How is it possible Christians can smile when they are going through uh, diverse or, uh, uh, do you say diverse or diverse? Diverse, right? And, uh, multiple types of problems. The Bible says in James chapter 1, when you're going through multiple types of tribulations and trials, count it all joy. Christians are the only bunch of crazy people who can do that. Because there is a God who promises victory. Somebody say amen. And so the first thing that I want to encourage us in the closing and the beginning of next year is number one, learn to worship God by revelation. No longer just by experience. Ask God, Lord, give me an opportunity to see you and to discover you in a new way that I've not seen before. Because the Bible says, sing to the Lord a new song. You don't have to be a songwriter. But your heart must have the rhythm of God. You don't need to know how to play notes. But your heart must be filled with the songs of God in the night. You say, how do I get that? Read the book of Psalms. 
People love poetry and people read books after books and some people have so much books they read too much books and they don't have time for the Bible. <laughs> and so just go back to the other side. Spend time. Spend time with the word and let God fill you with a new revelation of who he is. Amen. A new song or new sound can be a new chord progression that you've never thought before. A new melody that have never been sung before. New lyrics that we have not thought before. A music arrangement only angels can teach you. All that God is willing to do when we break away from the norm, we allow the Spirit of God to put a new song in your mouth. God is looking for someone who will do that. Psalms chapter 40 verse 3 says, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise of our God. Pay attention. Psalms chapter 40 Four zero and verse 3 because it's something unique that is hiding there he put a new song in my mouth a song of praise to our God and then why is that the next line says many will see and fear if he puts a new song in your heart there's no reason to fear you but something happens when God puts a new song in your mouth, there is a new authority that comes from heaven. People will come to see and fear the name of Christ when you walk in the authority of Jesus. Do you see what happens when you sing a new song? The devil will have a hard time trying to come up with new tricks all the time. What can I do to discourage him? What can I do to discourage this family? Because every time he does something, they've got a new song in their mouth. Hello? Their faces are not sulking away. They're not trying to find fault with one another and say, because of you, because of me, because of them. It doesn't matter because of who, there is a new song in your mouth and somebody say, Amen. Oh, that's what the devil, you know. Listen, sometimes when there are church problems, people will tell me, oh, go and solve it. I'd rather sing praises to God than to solve it. Let God solve the problem. Yeah. If the problem was created by the devil and only God is the solution. Yeah. Not human sitting. If people don't fear God, they will not fear man. But when there is a new song in our mouth, God is going to rewrite something of our DNA in Jesus' name in 2022. Yeah. Let the high praises of God, that means something about our worship must change. Something about your attitude in worship must change. That means we got, we got to go more than 30 minutes, isn't it? Huh? That means the service time will be a little bit longer. How is that? Do you know they did a survey for those people like if you're commuting from, if you're living in New York, from the city, and you stand your time at the traffic light waiting to cross. Yeah, I don't know which traffic light I cross. I never cross any traffic light because I'm driving everywhere. And I, I can't remember walking anywhere to cross any traffic lights. But they did a survey from a lifetime of a human person standing at a traffic light. And they counted how many hours before they die, they will stand at a traffic light just standing to cross. You know how long? Four years. Four years. That is not taking into account how long you wait at a restaurant for your food. Not taking into account how long you will take to eat. How long you are willing to line up for your favorite food. Everything we are willing to wait except in the presence of God we have to rush through. One and a half hour service is just nice. For what? It is just warming your spirit, man. Are you with me? And so we pray in the name of Jesus that we will become so hungry for God that God must and will visit us every time we come together. Are you with me? It takes a bunch of people to be hungry for Jesus and nothing wrong to be hungry for Jesus. Are you with me? 
You see, there are plenty of things at home. It can make us to be busy. But when you choose to be in the house of God, it's a choice of sacrifice. You know, in those days, in the early days, there is no TV, there is no electricity, there is no phone, there is no internet, there is no Wi-Fi, there is no entertainment. The only entertainment is the church, where people sing and they preach. And so people come and sit in the house of God and they're just so excited to fellowship with one another. They don't want to go back home. So people are gathering in the church all the time. But today, there is no reason for you to step out from your house. From morning to night, there is entertainment. As long as there is Wi-Fi, you can visit the world without stepping out from your room. And you are, you know, if you are, you've got a thousand emails, man, every five minutes. And people get offended when you don't reply to their email. I don't know why. I'm praying. Yeah, sure. What? What do you mean, sure? I am praying. I don't have time. Are you really sure? Are you with me? So God is saying, we need to upgrade our praising skills. We need to upgrade our trusting skills. How do I do? I don't know. Angels will come and stand with us and praise our God together. Amen. Do you know what that was, what was going on? When Pastor Jeff was leading worship, there was a commander of the Lord's army. An angel was standing beside me throughout the worship. Throughout the worship. And he was standing, I was sitting down for a while, but he was standing and just on guard. It was a marvelous thing to see. It is no longer the usual angels that uh, I usually will see from, for, for, for probably throughout this year. There was an upgrade of my spiritual escorts. Who is escorting me? There is an upgrade. That's what happens in the spiritual world. When your spiritual ranking gets upgraded, the ones who are accompanying you gets upgraded. There will be a greater authority when you come and stand in the presence of God. Does it mean that the other angels have got uh, no, uh, no power? No, no. They have. But ministering angels are there only for you. They are different. We are in the ministry, therefore, there are different reasons. But that's not the point I'm trying to share. I'm trying to encourage you, be faithful in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, if the angels can come and stand while we are worshipping God, imagine what's going to happen when we go into a high praise mode. Amen. Maybe we should have some Wednesday. All that we want to do is just praise and praise and praise and praise. Amen. And you got to praise God from your throat, not from your mouth, from the throat. <laughs> Hebrew says it very well. You got to season your throat. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear. There is a new authority that God will release. When we go higher, there will be a boldness that will come into you when you know you are connected to God. Somebody say, Amen. You're not afraid of, your, of the bills, the invoices that comes to your house. You know God is going to supply your needs. You're not afraid of what your body is saying. You know God is going to fix it up. You're not afraid of evil news because you know God is going to make those way for you. Amen. When the world will say no way, no sorry, God says there is a way. But the problem is we are looking for the world. We are looking for answers from the world. We are going from agency, from agency. But the moment heaven approves and endorses your form, every other agency have to bow. Yeah. And that's what God is training us today. Have the high praises of God in your mouth. The prophet somehow discovered that. Isaiah 42 verse 10 says, Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise from the end of the earth. How do they know that? How do they know how to describe it, the end of the earth? Because they did not have the geographic knowledge as much as we do now through science. Today we can see videos of the globe and the universe. They did not know that. 
They didn't even know what was the end of the earth. Because at that time, no one discovered the end of the earth. No one made the trip to discover that. But yet they have those descriptions. And this morning, I discovered that how they knew. Because I, it, it kept, you know, this puzzle. Why did the Lord show me this? Why did the Lord show me the universe and how it looks like? And then I said, no wonder the prophets, they saw God showed them and they are writing it. They are writing about it. You see. And it was scary today because I saw aspects of the universe that's not been discovered yet. And the Lord said, what is the universe? What is shown to you is only what you know. But there are other aspects that has not been revealed. There are distances that has not been shown. I hope to share if the Lord will lead me. But here you look at it. The prophets echoed, there will be a new song in your mouth. A new song has this ability to stretch your spirit man with such a capability as though from your beginning to your end, your praises will go forth. You see that? Because the Bible says that the, 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 the verse says, from the end of the earth, you who go down to the sea and all that fills it. Now, how do they know who goes down to the sea? At, at that time, they didn't discover the oxygen tank yet to discover the bottoms of the ocean. Now, how did he know that? The coastlands and their inhabitants. He said, they will find a new song. You see, my brothers and sisters, the moment you stop worshipping God, you die spiritually. That is the first death that will take place. When you die spiritually. When there is no life form in the worship, you die spiritually. The moment you die in worship, every other service and ministry in the church will die. You got to know that worship is the very nuclear force in the church. It is not a part of worship. It is the nuclear force. Everything from creation, Genesis to Revelation is embedded with the word praise and worship. The moment you take that away, you die. You cannot say, let's do three songs. You can't. Of course, there are orderliness. I believe in all of that. We cannot, we are done away with worship that didn't touch the heart of God. I've been in churches where the worship leader is like a karaoke singer. I've been in worship services where the worship is like a jukebox. Sing this song because I like this song. I've been in worship services where there is like competition the worship leader likes this group and this group like that group and they will sing that song. It is like we have to please. But God is looking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Therefore, if we are going to last, to complete the task, if the word of God is to go to the end of the earth, in the first it has to start with we singing a new song. A new song will release that authority in our hearts that God will stretch this anointing to touch people. Technology, oh, fantastic. We are watching over, you know, uh, 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 how many uh, people are watching in YouTube. I think now we are coming close to 25,000. But your spirit man has the capacity to touch millions. You see, we become so focused in a... Uh, investing into technology but God has not changed his process invest on your knees invest on your knees if not we will start doing cosmetic touch ups to touch the world instead of the power of God you know what I'm praying I hope you and I will pray together 
I am praying God. We need the rushing mighty wind. Not a breeze. That means when the rushing mighty wind comes, everybody will know God is here. I need that. We are fearful of storms, but this time it must be your rushing mighty wind. And somebody say, Amen. Amen. Revelations chapter 5. It says, they sang a new song. How come? In Revelation, it's the same thing. I remember sharing uh, the, with the church for, for the, uh, perhaps for the context of what I'm saying tonight. While in one of my visitations in heaven, I was brought, brought to a place where it, was, it looked like the symphony hall. The angels are all practicing. They were busy doing this and busy doing that. And they'll look at the notes as though the, the show is going to start. And, and, you know, like as though they are hurried, you know. I've seen symphonies in the TV. No, none of them seem hurried. They're all very calm. Because to be a symphony player means you are the master of your game. All of them are masters playing together. Isn't it? But here they were all like hurried, but they are supposed to be angels. So the Lord allowed me, I said, can I go and see what they are doing? He allowed me to go, okay, you go and talk to that angel. Look at the notes and see what they are doing. So I went there and I stood behind, I said, why, why are you all so hurriedly doing? No, no, uh, uh, we have not practiced this song before. I said, what do you mean? This is a new song. I said, okay, yeah, so what if it's a new song? No, no, this is a new song of the coming of Christ. What? He said, well, I, I said, well, what's the hurry? He said, it's going to happen in less than five minutes. The coming of Christ in heaven, the countdown is less than five minutes. We have to prepare. Uh, didn't you hear in the book of Revelation? They played a new song and they quoted this scripture. He said, you are standing with us because we are practicing that song, which I just quoted that scripture. They sang a new song. How scary it was. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and by your blood you ransomed people for God and from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you made them a kingdom and priests to our God and they shall reign on the earth. My brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I encourage you to sing a new song. Amen. Don't sing the same song at home to your husband and wife. <laughs> sing a new song unto the Lord. Somebody say. Amen. Don't go through like a rhetoric statement all the time nagging away. All that I'm talking about probably, it's like a second nature of a habit. Digging the past, talking about history, talking about unforgiveness, blaming, accusing, opening the door for demonic spirits to come into your house. Listen, when you close the door, keep the door shut. Amen. You know what's sometimes funny with the Christians? They command God to close the door and they open the door with their own mouth. Yes. But it's like the Bible here says, with the high praises of God... On your throat. Because you make sure you are singing out to order to keep the enemy out. Somebody say amen. amen. You see the Bible says in verse 1, sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Psalms 149 verse 1. And the second thing the Lord wants us to pay attention is the gathering. It's called the assembly of the godly. You see, who you gather together affects your spirit, you see. It got to be the assembly of the godly. But the question is, who are you assembling yourself with? The truth is, let's be, fact, uh, let's be factual. Not everybody in the, who attends a church is godly. We assume they should be. But you will only know when they are godly or not after Sunday service. Just hang around with them during lunchtime, you'll know whether they are godly people or not. Or their mind is full of worldliness, or their mind is full of ungodliness. 
They might think like the world all the time and they ask you to reason like the world all the time. You know, there are people whose mind is so pure, they only think about scriptures. And we, like the devil, like the serpent, will whisper, are you sure? Why are you playing the devil's game? If they are full of the word, the word will set them free. Amen. Don't corrupt their mind. Don't steal away the innocence of children of faith. Somebody say, Amen. You see, this gathering is important. And God is reminding us the importance of gathering. Don't be isolated. For those who are watching online, perhaps your church is still not open and I can't find any reason why. But I know some churches are still not open. Some pastors are still keeping the church closed. What to do? One brother wrote to me. I said, change your pastor, your church will open. Because there's no reason... Why the church is closed. It should be open. If you can't open the public church and open your house and get people inside your house to pray. Are you with me? Why must I go to church if you ask this question? People say, rather we stay at home, watch through Zoom because Zoom is the thing to go. Then the question reminds us, why must I go to school? Why must I go to work? Or a person who, who's at work, why must I go home? You see, the moment you ask these questions, it will never stop, isn't it? Why do we go home? Because there is an orderliness to human living. That is why. That is why we come home. We teach our children. We have curfew times. We ask them to come. What does the wives do when they call the husband? The first important loving question. Where are you? It's like a GPS question. It's not like, honey, are you okay? Did you take your lunch? Are you okay? What are you doing? So, where are you? Uh, traffic light. What kind of silly question is that? Where are you? What kind of question is that? What does it matter where am I? What is the first question? How are you? Huh? All the husbands say amen. amen. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> we tend to forget. You see, listen carefully. The Holy Spirit told me alternatives. Why must I gather in church? Alternatives was the very suggestion in the Garden of Eden that brought the sin. Alternatives, did God really say that? Are you sure that's the only way? Alternative thinking. And today, alternative thinking and alternative lifestyle and alternative behavior pattern and alternative gender has brought such a confusion in the orderliness God has brought. You see? People say, oh, we have to go back to house churches. Then open your house to become a powerhouse for God. Yeah. Don't use your house to talk nonsense. If the church is praying three hours, then do that in your house. Because people want to have a say. They want to have a voice. So instead of going to church and listen to a pastor, oh, we have to get into the house so I can talk. Then produce the power in your house. Let the church, let your house win souls. Pray for the sick and get them delivered. Don't just sit down and talk on theories and voicing out your opinion because opinion never changes anybody. It is only the power of God that touches people's lives. Oh, let's go back to the basics. Tell me what is the basics. The basics was they were naked. You want to go there? Tell me, everybody has a statement. But what is that statement? It was Jesus who said, I will build my church. So when you do what God wants you to do, when the people gather, when the godly gather, God puts a new song. I tell you what, right till the second coming of Christ, the church will never die. It will live. No one on earth could, uh, uh, is able till today to kill the church. Communism has tried just that much. Instead, you know what God did? He brought down communism. No one could stop them. 
Because God's church is His idea. So every time you have an alternative idea, you are against what God said. Well, there are places where there are no churches. I've ministered in the outback in Australia for four to five hour flying distance. We, we rented a single engine plane and we, fl- we flew. The next five hours will be the next town. Now, if there are no places, yes, house fellowships matters. But when you are right in the city, I was in Singapore when a lady came and said, oh, where are you gathering? We have an underground church. I said, which part of Singapore has underground? What do you mean under? No, it's a statement. What statement? This is not a communist country. Oh, we need to be careful. Careful of what? I need to know, you see. Being a Singaporean, at least I'll get to know. We need to have an underground church. You're putting the people from China to shame. Because in one whistle, one pastor friend of mine went to preach among the underground uh, church in the pastors, you know. Uh, he didn't know who was gathering and he was brought to this jungle and he was wondering why are people going to the jungle and there was one whistle, just one whistle. 10,000 people came up from the bush. And they had three days of pastors' conferences in the jungle. Away from the eyes. If you want to talk about underground church, that's what it means. You see. Do not go into alternatives. And I plead with you right now, alternatives is the mother of all sin. It starts that way. Alternatives. We try to deploy because we don't want the established church. Then be, you know, some people all the time talk about church. Then do something right. Or that church is not right. This church is not right. Okay, good. Then you show me how to do it right. Because God always wants to use someone to show a pattern to do it right. You get what I'm saying? But the thing is, they don't know what to do. They just know what to say. And so God has to review this process in the gathering of the saints. There will be a new song. The third thing we have to remember, be glad with your God. Look look at the scripture says, let Israel, verse 2, let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Are you happy with Jesus? Some people are not. Is he your king? Worthy enough of your worship? Because some people drag their feet, man. Ah, you know, I have to go to church. I have to. Are you sure? There will come a time you'll be screaming out, God, come to me. Because when you can, you said have to. There are things you don't have to, but we want to. But these are things that we have to, want to, must to, whatever to. Being in God's presence. The question is this. Look at that. In a few minutes you will see in that scripture in Psalms 149. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. In other words, God is saying, I don't want you to just sing with no action. I want you to add fervency to your worship. Dance before me. It's not crazy dance. It's not that go-go or disco dance. It is a pure dance. A one that you can express before God's presence without feeling guilty. One, someone told me uh, sometime back uh, in this church, they are no longer there. Oh, how come they are dancing? I said, why don't you dance then? I'm too old to dance. Then watch others who are dancing. <laughs> why are you getting angry and jealous? They listen, sometimes when you get old, when you, others do what you can't do, you can allow these feelings of grief and remorse to become anger. And you think you have a righteous statement, but it's not. It's a statement of jealousy. You see, instead of dancing for God, you dance for the world. And your time is up. Now someone else is dancing for God. 
let them rejoice before God. Do you understand? I'm not saying go, go like without control. There must be orderliness. I was, uh, you see, I grew up in a church uh, in the beginning days. I'm talking about 1985, 86. There was this lady. She's very conservative, very pure and innocent, very godly woman. When the worship will 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 uh, will start and the anointing of God will come. And you're talking about a very big church, you know, about three to four hundred people all standing and she will come and she will dance with her eyes closed and people's backs will be there. I'll be wondering, oh, oh, she's going to knock something out. And then, like as though someone took her feet and pulled the next step and she'll turn. Many, many, many times I knew the angel was guiding her. There is no way she will do all this and there is a person I know she's going to hit is as though someone withdraw the hand and she'll move the other side. And her eyes is fully looking up. How is that possible? This woman is very shy, she's very conservative, but she's willing to make herself as an open vessel unto God. And it, oh, you know what? People get offended. But they don't mind someone dancing out on different stages. That they don't mind. They admire people who are running around in bikini. And dancing around with different moves. But they do mind when a child of God is dancing. Are you with me? Come on, man. The Bible says now, you need to add fervency. Fervency. I'm not saying everybody should dance. It's not like a military thing. But it must be smooth enough for people to express their honor and their love for Jesus Christ. Amen. We got to knock out religion and enter into a time of worship and somebody say amen. amen. You see, some cultures are dancing cultures. You go to Africa, man, something is wrong if you can't dance. When I'm preaching among the African church, it's a natural thing for them to dance. You preach in South American churches, natural thing, they will dance. You preach in a Jewish, natural thing, you come to dance. You go to England, the natural thing to dance is... I say, can we all dance and worship God? I say, wow. Everybody has the expression. But God is saying, oh, look at that. You know, the Lord showed me something different this morning. John 4, 4.22 says that the true worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Do you agree with that statement? If Jesus precisely, accurately, if he said the true worshippers must worship in spirit and truth, that means all the time, during Jesus' time, there were false worshippers who were worshipping in lies and in deceit. You see, he saw it. He knew it. He witnessed it. And so he came and said, but the true worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. How we can fall into this disguise of the flesh. Seemingly worshipping, but our heart is full of evil. And so God distinguishes that the true worship must be done in spirit. So when a worship if you really want to take it as right to the point where Jesus said, if a worship is not from the Spirit, it is not accepted by God. Isn't it? That's how serious he meant it. If it's not from the Spirit, it is not going to my Father anyway. Psalm 149 verse 4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. When you praise God, when you sing praises to God, the Bible promises that God is so delighted in you. Even then, the enemy has his way of corrupting the dance, corrupting attention, corrupting to worship. Some will sing louder than the others so that their voice will drown others. But that's not this competition. God has given us a symphony. A song that will come inside your spirit, man. Amen. You see, something different here in verse, uh, Psalms 149, verse 5. 
I want to see you, uh, show you the difference of these words from the Hebrew and English. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Pretty much ordinary. Can you put that in the NIV version, please? Now you will see it's so different. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor. What is that honor? To worship God, you see. To worship God is an honor given to you. My question is, do you rejoice in that honor? You see, my brother, my sister, I don't know much about your background, but I, at least I tell you what background I came from, right? Idol worshippers. You'll go into the different temples hoping that they will listen to you. There will be, uh, uh, for the sake of comparison, right? Uh, uh, sometimes I say it politely, not to be laughed at because they are doing it sincerely. There, there were some people who will go to the Buddhist temple and they will have this giant statue of the sleeping Buddha and people will go and press his feet hoping that he will be merciful to them. And they will go to different temples. There will be gigantic uh, temples and uh, idols and uh, 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 statues and hoping that these gods will look at them. So God is saying... In comparison to all the alternatives, do you consider as an honor where I am your living God? Amen. You see, what an honor to worship this living God. In Singapore and the Hinduism, there is a festival where they will put spikes onto their body. Some of them will put 200 to 300 spikes onto their body and carry these carriages, walking about four to five miles, hoping that the gods will be favorable to them and to get their sins forgiven. So God is asking this question, do you consider them to worship me as an honor? In the Old Testament, they had worship where they will sacrifice a child from different houses, so that rain will come to the worship of Maluk. They will sacrifice a virgin so that that land will be blessed. Different sons and daughters will be picked up randomly from different houses to be sacrificed. But here Jesus sacrificed himself for us. Do you consider it as an honor to worship him? You see, this scripture changes this ball game. It is not a forceful thing, but it's an honor to worship the living God. Somebody say amen. amen. And then we come to verse 6, which is our favorite uh, uh, scripture. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and the two-edged swords in their hands. The high praises of God and a two-edged sword. Why? Because worship and warfare always goes together. There is no victory without worship. If you want to win the war, people say, oh, I need to know a thousand scriptures. I tell you what, you don't have to know a thousand scriptures, but you must know how to worship the living God. Because victory is not a formula. It is a relationship with the living God. You see, somehow the church, every time God reveals the truth, they get stuck to the truth without Him. They all the time change the whole process into a formula Instead of God. In Psalms, Isaiah 58, God says, Why are you fasting? Fasting I did for you to come closer to me. It is not a ritual. When you forget the poor, it is not fasting. When your heart is filled with yourself, that is not fasting. You are not worshipping an idol in the front, but your heart is full of idols. That is really not fasting. You get what I'm saying? So God all the time, God people to worship him. The very interesting process is this. Why the word throat? Remember the question. Why in the Hebrew it was a word called throat? Let the high praises of God be in their throat. There is no reason why the translators of earlier translation translated it. Well, the high praises of God in your mouth sounds more right. 
Then you say throat. I was so puzzled. I, I was just thinking about it, studying the Hebrew. And then I found this scripture in Isaiah 58 verse 1. Cry aloud and do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Somebody say, Amen, my family. One of them have those kind of trumpet voices. <laughs> but you know the word aloud in the Hebrew comes from the same word for throat. In other words, when God says, let the high praises of God come from your throat. Sing out his praises with such an authority that when you sing from your throat, I'm not saying you mentally do all these signs of thinking. I'm not. A, it's the principle of scripture yeah. that your worship must be sincere. Yeah. It must be filled with authority. Don't be offended if someone beside you is singing out loud. Don't be offended. The problem is they don't know how to sing soft and your problem is you don't know how to sing loud that is why when both of you put together it makes in to become a symphony <laughs> somebody say amen. amen you see your voice of authority shows of who you are in christ your declaration of the word during these times where there is confusion, everybody is still talking about whether we should take vaccine or not. Can you get over it and start praising God for a change? Yes. We have been talking about this for two years, man. Yes. You are still wondering. Some of you should be a minister in the parliament house. I don't know why you are an average citizen. <laughs> Some of you should be scientists because you know more about the virus than the virus itself. <laughs> Some of you should be working in the CIA. You know more about the leaked documents. Even the CIA wonder which leaked document. Because today, conspiracy theory speakers, picking, they are making more money in YouTube than the actual truth. Everybody has time to serve. And so everybody is surfing. And so God wants us to return back to His presence and sing the high praises of God in their mouth. Amen. Yeah. Let me finish with these powerful scriptures in the last part of this scripture where the Bible says, Let the godly exalt in verse 8 of Psalm 149. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth or in their throat and two-edged sword in their hands. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the judgment written. You see, this is an important statement you have to pay attention. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. After praising, after singing, after the high praises, now God is saying, I'm going to execute judgment on this nation. God is prophetically, prophetically already telling us what's going to happen next year. Judgment is going to come. I just don't want to talk about it yet. The Lord showed me it is going to happen. But while that is happening, the church shouldn't go into confusion. We must go into High praise mode. In the midst of salvation, in the midst of judgment, there will be salvations. In the midst of judgments, there will be healing. In the midst of confusion, there will be clarity. People will be crying out for the living God. That is why the church mustn't be confused. The church must be praising and it will be lit up like a, like a zone. People can see that's the church you should be going to. Are you with me? We cannot participate into ungodly works of darkness. We must become the light that God has called us to be. And now God is setting His church in order. My church will be praising me during these times. Amen. It must be the high praises of God in our mouth. The Bible says, you see, when we walk in victory, and the praises of God in our mouth, the word will now become a sword 
And the Lord told me, specifically say, when the word of God is to become a sword, that means we are talking about the Bible practicing believer. Not just the church attender. People say, my sword doesn't work for me because you don't know your Bible. When you don't know your Bible, there is no authority in you. You won't know what to code. And you see, the devil doesn't care about your wisdom, but he does care about the scriptures. Oh, I don't know how to code 10 scriptures like you, Pastor. No, you just need to know one scripture and code it well. But this doesn't fit the bill. Don't worry, the devil is dumb. You just use the same scripture, it will work. Hello? Amen. He that is in you is greater than he that is in this world. Amen. People say, but you know, you must know the right scriptures to quote. Well, if you know, praise God. If you don't know, if only you know John 3, 16. Quote it. Amen. For God so loved the world. Ah, oh, uh, you know, this is about finance. God so loved the world. He loved me to set me free. Amen. <laughs> Are you with me? God wants to show that this is the time where judgments are going to come upon kings and governments. He's going to put people into chains of iron because they are binding this nation down. Now God is reminding us, listen, look at the scripture that says, to execute judgment on them, the judgment which is written. There is a judgment which is written in the scriptures. And now is the time when these words must come onto our mouth and you speak the word of God. Our job is not to curse someone. Our job is not to wish someone will end up in hell. But our job is to execute the praises of God and let the angels do their job. Yeah. That's all we've got to do. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. You become an active believer when the word of God is active. Then we will pull down strongholds. Our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The Bible says God has given us the authority. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to worship the Lord? We've got a few minutes to enter into 2022. Yeah. Pastor, come. You want me to play like you? <laughs> no, you see? Come, come, let's all stand up together and we're going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You're going to enter into the high praises of God. Amen. Amen. We're going to come and say, God, use me. Give me an anointing to worship you. Hallelujah. We want to thank you, Father. We pray. Give us a new anointing to worship you. Give us a new song to worship you. Let the church be filled with the praises of God. Let the pulpit be anointed. Let the people be anointed. Let there be a new authority. Let there be miracles and healings and deliverance. Let the dead walk. Let the lame walk. Let the deaf hear. Let the mute speak. Oh, let the paralyzed be healed by the name of Jesus. Powerful miracles. Let there be the rushing mighty wind. Give you glory, Father. We thank you. We honor you for each one of your people. In Jesus' name, let us all say, Amen. Amen. A blessed new year, 2022, in Jesus' name. Amen.